Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today I want to give some updates about some equipment that I just received uh, and also uh, about the EOS adapter from Astro Mechanics that I reviewed in a previous video which I'm linking to up there uh, especially with, in re with regards to hardworks with uh, Sigma lenses and Tamron lenses that have uh, Canon mounts, Canon EOS mounts. Uh, so first things first, I received, I found on uh, Yahoo Auction and received this uh, little 15 uh, millimeters f1.4 lens uh, which was ridiculously cheap I, I have no idea why maybe like i think there was dust in there uh no no real um damage or anything like there's no uh, i don't know how you say that in english cubby in japanese there's no mold in there uh so looks fine and i want to see whether i could be able to close it down to maybe f2.8 or uh, f3 something like that f3.2 and use it in addition with some kind of narrowband filters either with my 1600 mm pro uh, sorry 1600 mm cool along with uh, narrowband filters which i showed in a previous video which you can uh, see up there but also um, along with my uh, asi 533 mc pro uh, sorry see how it would work my goal is kind of to attempt to take uh, an image of the Milky Way in the Cygnus area with the Cygnus wall, the Sadr, Sadr, whatever area, and the Eastern and Western Vale nebulae uh, all together, and which should be possible with, uh, with the field of view afforded by this. It should be nearly impossible in Tokyo, but hey, I want to at least try it, uh, maybe in full narrowband, or maybe in not completely full narrowband because I just got this, which is the ZW two inch dual band filter. And this kind of filter has been very popular in uh, recent, like in the past two years or so. Uh, there has been like the, um, uh, the OPT triad filter followed by the OPT triad ultra filter. Uh, there has been the uh, up to long L enhanced filter. There has been tons of filters that are basically semi narrowband filters. Some of them are true narrowband filters like the OPT Trad Ultra, but for one shot color cameras, for colored cameras, which is which is something that you would not see just like three years ago, which is uh, which is really neat. So those filters, they're made for nebula in, um, in very light polluted conditions. And uh, the, I want to try this with my 533MC Pro together with this 50 millimeters lens, but also together with this uh, 200 millimeter lens that I have here from Canon, because with this, I can actually, and using the 533MC Pro that's, that's attached here, I can actually uh, frame the Veil Nebula perfectly well. Uh, including like west and east parts of the nebula, which is what I intend to do. So I got this filter. Uh, it's one of the filters that has the, the widest bands, pass bands of those filters, which makes it cheaper. And also it makes it less sensitive to band shift. Uh, so band pass shift, which is like the, the light, the wavelengths of the light that it goes, that it lets through shifts with your focal length. And because I would be using camera lenses, maybe at f2 or f2.8, that kind of stuff, it can have a, a, an effect when you're using very tight narrowband filters. So I got this one cheaper. It's not the end of the world if, I, if it doesn't work well for me. I can always sell it back on Yahoo Auctions. It's, uh, you typically don't lose that much when you sell back on Yahoo Auction. So let's open the box, see what's inside. There's a plastic case inside with a filter that has absolutely nothing in it. And the reason is that I've already unmounted uh, this filter so that I can put it in my imaging train with the uh, Astro Mechanics adapter. And uh, you can see in here, this, this, this little ring there actually uh, is kind of like something that I, um, put together to just, I can unmount a two inch filter, put it in basically an M42 adapter and use it as is and still have my 44 millimeters of back focus. Uh, now these days, the EOS adapters actually come with a way to put those filters in uh, directly. They have a, an adapter specifically for two inch filters. For me, I have to actually unmount the, the filter glass and put it in there. I, I did that in a previous video if you're interested uh, in look at, looking at that. So now I'm exactly at the right uh, back focus distance for my 200 millimeters lens. And so I am completely ready to target the Veil Nebula and take some awesome semi-narrowband filter uh, pictures here from Tokyo. Uh, 
whether it works or not, that's something else uh, to see in the longer term. The problem being that it is raining. It has been raining. It will keep raining. It will keep being cloudy. It is the rainy season in Tokyo. Oh, well, so I need to wait until this is over uh, and then we'll see how that works. Now, this Astro Mechanics adapter, as I mentioned at the start of this video, uh, I've gotten feedback from other users that it has issues with their Sigma lenses or Tamron lenses. And on the Astro Mechanics website, it is actually saying that, uh, you know, it's uh, an adapter for Canon lenses, but Sigma and Tamron lenses as well. And uh, my own Sigma 135 millimeters f1.8 lens works with it. Although it is true that from time to time, I need to reconnect the USB for the lens focuser to start moving. Once it starts moving, there's no problem throughout the session. But at first connection, sometimes like, like I pressed the button and it didn't move. Okay, I reconnected the USB and it started moving. Okay, I thought no big deal. And you know, it was not a big problem for me, but some others have had issues. I uh, had uh, one message about their Sigma 85 millimeters art lens that simply did not work with the adapter. This seemed to have tracked it down to the way that this adapter communicates with the mount in terms of the aperture. Um, there's also someone who came back to me about a Tamron lens that did not work well with the adapter and they just returned the adapter because their purpose was to use the Tamron lens. So this is something to keep in mind. It is possible that the ASCOM driver that I wrote makes it work better with those Sigma lenses and with those Tamron lenses. I've actually, um, it because it does not do any aperture modification. It just does uh, focuser movements, it does not try to initialize anything with uh, the Astro Mechanics adapter. And that could actually make it work better. I'm not sure, we don't know. Uh, I would need more Sigma lenses and Tamron lenses to check it out. I don't have those lenses. Heck, I have such Canon lenses, I don't even have a Canon camera. I mean, I have the G5X, but it's not a DSLR. So I don't have a cam Canon camera to use it with. So, uh, yeah, so that's quick updates. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I am waiting for clear skies and I think I'll be waiting for a while, but you know, one can always hope. Uh, among my uh, projects coming soon, um, so it will be, I'm trying to find a way to capture the ISS uh, to track it via my C9.25R, my R200 SS Newtonian, see if I can get pictures of that as it, you know, I want to find transits over the sun, over the moon. I'm also considering buying an H alpha telescope, except they're super expensive and I don't know what to do. Um, you know, all sorts of stuff uh, going on. There's also a partial solar eclipse that's coming on June 21st, uh, but on that day, I'll actually be doing uh, a sieve, which stands for simulation d'incident de vol of flight incident simulations, uh, which is basically me flying, paragliding over a lake and then doing weird stuff with my wing and trying to re recover from those weird situations uh, to be prepared if they, they happen in real life. So I might not actually be able to enjoy the eclipse. I might be in flight, but I'll still be bringing something. Or I hope to bring something to the place that I'm going to do that at so I can watch the eclipse uh, when it happens. We'll see. It's a partial solar eclipse. Uh, we'll see if I can try to capture it. Uh, that's basically uh, it for today. So, you know, I don't let the bad weather keep me down. There's tons of stuff to actually do, even with bad weather. Please be like that. Do not despair when it's cloudy. There's still tons of stuff to do. One of the things to do as well, by the way, this is uh, coming in an upcoming video. Probably, uh, it's either in an upcoming video or you've seen it. It's VR astronomy. So if I've already published it, I'll put the link up above uh, uh, just watching the stars, but in VR. And I think that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, uh, please click the like, like button. Please click, click the subscribe button, the notification icon while you're at it. And, uh, you know, um, don't forget whenever you can, uh, when it's not cloudy, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.